Hi, my name is Christy and this is the American Chinese Food Show where we analyze historical artifacts like vintage menus, recipe books, photographs and text to tell the story of American Chinese food. Let's take a look at some menus. Spot something interesting in the appetizer section? Have you seen this item, Peking ravioli, before? What is it? There is one thing in common for all these menus. All the restaurants are from Boston area in Massachusetts. In today's episode, we will talk about the story of Peking Ravioli and learn more about Joyce Chen, an often forgotten culinary icon from the 60s and the 70s. You probably have guessed it, Peking Ravioli is jiaozi, what we generally call dumplings. Dumpling or jiaozi is basically the umbrella term for fillings wrapped in dough. We have specific names for specific cooking styles of the dumplings, for example, guotie, which literally means sticking to the pot, is what we call pot stickers today. We also boil or steam the dumplings. Imagine yourself in 1958, when Joyce Chen first opened her restaurant in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Most people knew Chinese food as chop suey, chow mein, some so-called mandarin restaurants were popping up selling a new kind of Chinese food never seen before, northern Chinese food. Peking duck, mushu, hot and sour soup, but only mostly in New York City. How do you explain dumplings to your Massachusetts audience? According to Joyce's son, Stephen, his mother debated how to call them. She was contemplating the difference between dumpling or Peking ravioli. She was afraid people would think of an American dumpling, like you'd get at Cracker Barrel, a thick, doughy, noodly thing, Stephen says. She really wanted to say something about it that implied it would have a filling in it. She ended up with ravioli, and Peking was a shout out to Beijing, where Joyce was from. Some say she named it Peking Ravioli to appeal to the larger Italian population in the area. But listen to what Joyce Chen had to say. So this is jiaozi. This is a guo tier. English name Peking Ravioli. That's why I always think Marco Polo must brought off jiaozi from Peking to Italy. That's why Italy have Italian jiaozi. They just like it. Joyce Chen was an innovator. She taught fellow mothers at her kids' school how to make spring rolls with hamburger beef mixed with dry sherry. She also patented her own flat bottom wok with a handle. For this, she was sometimes criticized for not being authentic. But Joyce's intention is very clear. She wanted as many people as possible to try to cook Chinese food, overcoming hurdles like access to ingredients and difficulty to maneuver Chinese cooking techniques. We have here an episode where she taught us how to make Peking ravioli on WGHB, Boston's local PBS station, from 1966. In it, she aimed to always show her audience multiple ways to do something, from beginner to those who want to try the more traditional Chinese way and why it would be a better choice. From what rolling pin to use, um, she had a backup rolling pin made from a cut broomstick, how to roll out the dough to how to fold a dumpling. I was especially impressed by her showing her audience in a 30 minute show how to hand tear dough pieces. This is something I learned when I was in a noodle school in China. Noodle cooks have to perfect their dough hand tearing skill because it's actually faster than using a cleaver to cut them into pieces, especially when people are coming into your noodle place non-stop during lunch hours. For being authentic, in quotes, or not, this is what Joyce Chen had to say. I don't expect that you make right away that way, but nice to let you know so you can be improved. And especially, I don't want some of the experts come, they say, you didn't make it right. I love her for this. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit. This is the era of Bewitched and the Andy Griffith show. How did Joyce Chen get her own show? So, the French chef premiered in 1963 on the same TV station to rave reviews. 
Julia Child visited the Joyce Chen restaurant often and was a fan. And the producers of Child's show wanted to capitalize on her show's successes with Chinese food. So Ruth Lockwood, Child's producer, asked Joyce if she'd be interested in hosting her own show. So in 1966 and 1967, Joyce hosted the Joyce Chen cooks in the same original studio set as the French chef, just draped in some Oriental furnishings. It ran for 26 episodes and did not get a second season. Some say it's because the show didn't get sponsorship. Some say Chen didn't have the same charisma as Child, and the station just wanted to focus on Julia Child. But the show's importance is undeniable. It's the first nationally syndicated cooking show hosted by a woman of color. America had never seen a face like hers cooking on television before. Sixty years later, Peking Ravioli has become its own original version of dumplings in the Boston area. According to internet discussions, some people who grew up there learned about Peking Ravioli before they learned about dumplings.、Um, some people never really knew that they are the same thing. Well, technically, not exactly the same. There's a difference in the thickness of the skin and the filling. Mary White, a professor of anthropology in Boston University, grew up dining at Joyce's restaurants, and she recalled the Peking ravioli's were almost all meat. Maybe it's to cater more to the American palates. Peking ravioli's you can find today are a bit chubbier in shape with a thicker skin. If you want to try making Peking ravioli, check out the recipe link in the video description. You can also go to WGBH. Often thought to watch more of Joyce Chen cooks. I will let Joyce end with this episode. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. See you soon. So until then, I think you will like to make a lot of jiaozi and to serve guo tie this way for a snack. Use this for whole meal, and I know you will like it. Even you can have it in the outside for a garden party. Cook them on the electric. Frying pan, make cook one by one. Let your guests to eat. So, until then, 再见，再见。